Peace for Ukraine or you reign. Because they connected all kinds of machines to all over my body. And because of that, they didn't allow the room to be warm. I don't know why. The room was so cold, and that made my pain worse. And they didn't give me painkillers. But the painkiller, even if they give, they cannot give too much in my situation, yeah? And the room was so cold. I sneaked in some warm bag, you know, and they just took it away. They said, cannot do this. It's too dangerous. They worried the blood would boil over or something and the, the wound would bust or something. Because of the cold, it's very terrible. It's very terrible. It not just makes you in pain, it makes you restless. And I was supposed to stay still. I, I should not move. And how do you keep yourself still when you feel like you want to jump out of the window and run all over because it's like ants all over your body and something inside you keeps pushing you. That was the worst time of my life ever. But what was wrong with you, Master? I cannot tell you. Secret. I got an infection from one of your sisters, one of the rare diseases, transmitted by talking by being near mouth and uh, having saliva and stuff. He says, I'm okay now. I mean, I'm really okay now after all this time. I still have pain sometimes, but I know I'm okay. I, my health is good. Before, I thought life is forever. <laughs> I'd probably never get well. It seems like that, you know? Even if you take medicine, it seems like forever. <laughs> this was a very difficult disease. Rare, yes. Okay, never mind, that's enough, you know, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> even at one time, you know, I asked you guys to wear masks, even then I knew it, but it was still unavoidable. Somehow it sneaked in, into my life. At home. <laughs> you know, avoidable here, but I can't avoid it at home. Sometimes I just do it, you know, just like that. Okay, I don't want to mention from whom either, okay? I don't want to mention what. Yeah, it's good enough that you know like that. It was a terrible time to try to hide your ID and have to stay in the hospital to, to know what's wrong with you and then to have an operation. And you can't run anywhere. If I run, I have to go to another hospital. And another hospital doesn't have that equipment in that area. For some special equipment, you have to go to some special place. And so in that area, it will be the same, <laughs> the same ID problem. So every day I was just thinking, okay, maybe this is my last day. Maybe the police will bust in any time now, any minute now. I'm just waiting for it. I just said, whatever happens, what can I do? Just somehow I was protected and I'm fine. <laughs> they yell at me, scream at me, but they didn't do much. And until the last day, when I went in to pay the money, then the, the woman at the secretary at the reception yelled at me again. I said, I just come to pay, but you have to give me the passport. And I said, why? I don't have it here. Please, I just want to pay. And then she started yelling at me again. Before you look different, now you look different. I say a lot of things I didn't even understand her language so well. But I know she was yelling, that's for sure. It was very loud, everybody heard it. So the chief of the administration, I guess he's the chief, somehow heard her. Everybody would hear it from miles away. She was so loud. And what could I do? I was just, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, really, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I just want to pay and then go, you know. But she kept yelling nonstop. She wouldn't accept money even. She'd just say, I want your passport. And then she got somebody translating into English and French and whatever, telling me passport right now. <laughs> and then the chief called her in somehow. And, and she took me and the driver in as well. I don't know what the chief said to her. 
Uh, but one look at me and he was saying something to her and then she came out. Her attitude changed one way, two degrees. She was just smiling at me and said, when are you going back to England? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> no more passport, nothing. And then she even accepted my gift afterward. Before she was thinking that I'm a criminal, uh, because when I go somewhere, I always bring a little gift, you know? And she didn't want it, even. She was kind of, oh, she was yelling so loud. <laughs> ah, I didn't know what to do. I just kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know? And I was so painful, so sick. And I was bandaged everywhere. And, and still she was yelling at me. I guess the chief took one look at me and was feeling so sorry for the little girl, you know. My driver, he's about five, six feet something high. And I'm very small and he's tough and strong. And I'm little <laughs> compared to him. And probably he took a good look at me and he felt such a sorry woman, you know. Bandage everywhere and I couldn't even talk well and, and the stomach everywhere and couldn't even walk. And then got yelled at like that. So he said something to her. And she took me out, and immediately she changed. I was so surprised and relieved, of course, you know. I didn't know what he told her. Probably he said, well, just take her money, that's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> all, all we need is money, right, to pay for the staff and medicine, doctors, that's all they need. What the heck do you need my passport for? Yeah? And the worst would be if they don't take that money, I would just run away. <laughs> <laughs> Right? So he said, just take her money. <laughs> Maybe it was like that, before she ran away. <laughs> well, if it was somebody else, they would have pretend to be angry or get angry or scared and then go away and don't ever come back again. But I was just too good. I even came back again to make sure that everything was paid because after that there were some more visits, follow up, you know? Yes. And the scan, uh, sometimes the scan is very expensive. They call it something? Some T-scan or something? Cascan. Not CAT scan. Huh? CT scan. So you scan the whole body, you know? And you have to stay still. And first they put some blue thing in your body, a blue medicine something, just so that they can see well. And you have to drink a little water first. And I could not even clam on there. And they were so rough, they just... <laughs> push you in there. They don't understand your pain. They didn't know that I had so much pain. They could not understand. Also because the doctor gave the wrong medicine. Therefore, it didn't help me at all, so the pain continued. And they took me from one room to another, all kinds of scans, all kinds of tests always, and then put me on a bed here, bed there, and I could, I could hardly... I, I'd rather die, you know, I'd rather die, because it was so painful. And because they didn't know what was wrong with me yet, so they could not just keep giving too much of anything, you know, just give antibiotics and painkillers, but it didn't help in that situation. It just made it worse. It stiffened my body more, and then it, it was terrible. I couldn't even eat or anything. <laughs> and the worst thing was that I was worried about the ID. I was really protected because laying so long in the hospital, <laughs> Of course, I changed to another two or three hospitals, but still, you lay for at least many weeks in the hospital, and still, I worry. Okay, let's meditate, or I will have to go home, huh? Okay? Any more questions, stories, to keep me alive here? Yeah, later, love, yes. Tell me. Yeah, uh, I want to thank you first, Master, for inviting us. Oh, inviting oh. you? <laughs> Did I write an inviting letter? Oh, I applied, but um, although all the risk and the dangerous situations, huh? Um, you the risk, in a dangerous situation? I mean, you you oh, yeah, so. you have to come. I'm used to it. Thank you I so much. I don't mind danger situations if I can come see you. Sometimes I can. That's a problem. Not the problem of danger. It's the problem of cannot. Yeah. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. And um, I hope it's funny. Uh, I have um, I adopted a cat recently, mm. and 
And I rescued him a while ago um, with some other sisters. Yeah. And I couldn't adopt him um, right away, so I was looking for others to adopt him. Uh -huh. But no one showed up, uh, no one was aw and available. Then? So he was kind of depressed. So what happened now? Um, Just come right to the end. Did you adopt him? Yes, I okay, did. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared that you throw him out. <laughs> <laughs> and since um, I wanted him to be happier, I named him Happy yeah. after your dog. And uh, he started eating a lot. Yeah? Yes, like, <laughs> like your dog. Uh -huh, he's happy. <laughs> yes. Is he fat? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> did the doctor say he's fat? Yeah, he, he said sort of he's healthy, yeah. He's healthy, then it's fine. It doesn't matter if he's fat. But later I found out all the other cats who named Happy, they all eat a lot. Yeah? Yeah. Of course they do. Like my dog, people. Yeah, yeah. Especially Happy, she eats a lot. And the doctors say, go on the diet, fine. I put her on the diet, but after diet, she eats more. <laughs> <laughs> then she is all the same. Or she goes and takes the food from other dog people <laughs> when I'm not looking. Yeah? Or she goes out and eats a nonsense, and I'm worried even more. So lately, uh, the doctor found out that she has the thyroid problem, and that's why she's fat, not just a fruit. So give her medicine, and she's very <laughs> model-like now. <laughs> but still eats it a lot. Yeah. Anything I eat, she likes to eat, even if it's no good for her. I say, no good for you, please. Not because I don't want to give you, but it's not too good. She says, never mind. <laughs> good for you, good for me. <laughs> so eat. Sometimes I feel sorry for, for her also because... Oh, she has this food. She has no boyfriend, nothing anymore. <laughs> and she's old now. I never know when she goes, you see? So it's a short life. If she enjoys it, why not? She enjoys it. As long as she's in a dog person whose life, I want her to enjoy. Yeah, enjoy also. Not just always discipline and not this, not that. And dog people's lives are already so limited. And because they live with me, sometimes uh, I like to be clean. So we have to clean them many times. Whenever they go out, we clean them so that they can come in, inside the house. Because they be all over on my bed, my sofa, everywhere. And printing everywhere, paws, if we don't clean. Flowers, <laughs> paws, flowers everywhere. So we clean them, also for, for health's sake, you know? Uh, they don't always like that, of course. It's, it's a kind of hassle a little bit, no? To lift your legs up, clean them four times, you know? But I devised eh, a new system. I told the attendant, don't mess with it too much. Because originally, when there are a lot of assistants, it's also okay, you know. But when only one, then I tell you, don't, don't bother too much. Just uh, clean them once with uh, vinegar, yeah? And then uh, with water again, if you can. If it's too busy, don't bother, yeah? As long as it's vinegar, it's fine. Or I'll use vinegar for one or two days only, not every day. Other days, just water, so clean. And now we just do like this. Of course, they have to wash the dog people's paws when they come in because of mud, you know? Yes. Otherwise, they will, they will print their paws everywhere, you know, and we can't keep washing. Also, for environmental protection, you keep washing, there's a lot of detergent everywhere. And water is also precious, yeah? So because of that, we clean the dogs. Because if we don't clean the dogs, then we have to wash the sheets all the time. Bây giờ tình đã xa hồi, ôi ta cả tư.